Hi, I'm Chris Brunhaver and I'm the Senior Speaker Design Engineer here at PS Audio. And I'm here in our sales office and we're talking speaker tech once more. And the question for today uh, is, you know, why does a tweeter look different than a woofer? You know, what's going on there? And, um, you know, a, a woofer has been around for many, many years, tweeters coming later. Um, and, you know, a traditional woofer size, you know, in a home hi-fi speaker is something like five to eight inches. Um, and tweeters are typically a one-inch dome. There's some, some other types. There's, there's smaller domes. There's, um, you know, planar and, and, uh, and ribbon tweeters and, and other types of tweeters. But let's just talk about, about domes to start. Um, so why is a dome tweeter one inches when a woofer may be six inches? And, and it comes down to the primary factor is, is directivity and also stiffness. So um, a, uh, the reason why a dome tweeter is a dome is not actually for dispersion or something like that. It's not to make the sound spread out that it's domed. It's actually, that's just a very nice strong shape. And um, so, you know, it is constructed sort of similarly to a woofer, um, except for, yeah, it's just a small, smaller diameter. And um, it's a smaller diameter because um, sound, uh, once it starts, the wavelengths of sound get to be a similar size to the, the source that's producing, producing them. So in this case, a woofer or a tweeter, then they start to become directional. And um, with that, um, you know, the, they call it beaming. So the, the sound's, you know, omnidirectional or nearly omnidirectional or hemispherical off the front of the, the speaker and then starts to just have a tighter and tighter pattern to where at very, it's very directional, be like a laser beam of sound. And the problem with that is um, what is, you know, I ideal speaker would actually have the same sound off axis or, or very similar in character to that of the on axis sound. So um, most um, hi-fi speakers now are designed with essentially flat on axis sound and then gradually sloping down at high frequencies of, uh, of the treble. And um, that's allowed for by this, this dome. So you know, they really don't start becoming very directional till above about eight kilohertz or so uh, for a one inch dome, um, depending on the construction. So um, you know, in that case, um, you can have a, sp a speaker that is tonally very similar, you know, both on and off axis. Um, the actual, um, if you want to get into the acoustics of it, you can get the Baranek, um acoustics book and talks about wave number and, and um, this uh, KA2, which is a, the formula for sort of directivity of a piston here. Um, so um, in any case, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's really the, the smaller the source, the, the wider the coverage at a, at a given frequency. But um, th there are practical limitations to this because you want to be able to play sufficiently low in frequency. So, um, you know, whereas with a one inch dome tweeter, you can cross over to the woofer uh, at, say, two kilohertz or so. Um, you know, a, a three quarter inch dome or half inch dome might be an octave above that. Um, or, you know, qu quite a bit higher. And that really changes the directivity of the system because you end up having a woofer that's playing up higher and it's starting to beam. So, um, you know, having a, the optimal um, crossover point to maintain, you know, sort of constant coverage, constant directivity is important. And so the shape and size of a tweeter is, is very much designed, you know, for that. Uh, and that's why you see these physical differences in size. Um, the other thing you start to see more and more now is uh, acoustic waveguides on tweeters. So what an acoustic waveguide is, is it's like a horn, you know, where you have this cupped shape around um, the, the tweeter, but it's not designed to increase output, but to, to de uh, designed to match how directional it is, the directivity of it um, at the crossover point with a woofer so that it the ideal case would be that the tweeter has the same directivity as the woofer. So if the woofer is already starting to beam, then you want to have a waveguide that's shaped like 
uh, the directivity of the woofer so that the tweeter matches it. And that's something you're, you're seeing more and more. Uh, and um, it's not without its challenges to, to implement. And, and there are sometimes caveats with that. But um, you know, that's another thing you're see you will see that sort of altering the shape of a tweeter. Um, you know, in the case of uh, PSLia, we're also doing some work with uh, planar magnetic tweeters, which are a flat film or thin film tweeter with uh, etched uh, magnetic circuit on it. And those have some interesting characteristics. They're physically larger than a one-inch dome, typically, and so match better with larger woofers as far as directivity. And then there's um, some acoustic treatments to them to, to make them have wider coverage at high frequency. So um, you know that's another approach, but it's a, a different shape altogether. Is a is a rectangular type tweeter, but again, it's quite a bit smaller than a woofer for the same reasons. Um, in any case, a pretty simple topic, but something that um, you know there's some misinformation out there about. And, and uh, hope you got some some good information here, and and uh, we'll talk to you again here soon. Thank you. Bye.